Hello, I'm Dong Yeop Kang, and today I would like to talk about our recent work regarding the proof of LD fiber robust conjecture. This is joint work with Tom Kelly, Daniel Lacoon, Avishang Mesuku, and Derek Ostus from University of Birmingham. So let us begin with some basic notations. A hypergraph is a tuple of a vertex set V and an edge set E, where E is a collection of subset of vertices. A linear hypergraph is a hypergraph where every pair of vertices lies in a most one edge. So the class of linear hypergraphs is a straightforward generalization of the class of simple graphs. Here we have a linear hypergraph with seven vertices and three edges such that every pair of vertices is in at most one edge. Now I will introduce some terminology on hypergraph edge colorings. A proper edge coloring of a hypergraph is a coloring of the edges such that no two intersecting edges have the same color. Chromatic index denoted by chi prime is a minimum number of colors used in a proper edge coloring of a hypergraph. So here we have a linear hypergraph and a proper edge coloring with three colors. And because there is no proper edge coloring with two colors, this linear hypergraph should have chromatic index exactly three. In fact, one can express terminologies on edge coloring in terms of matchings. A matching is a subset of these joint edges. And if one consider the set of edges with the same color in, an, in a proper edge coloring, because no two intersecting edges have the same color, a proper edge coloring is just a decomposition of the edge set into matchings. Similarly, the chromatic index of a hypergraph is the minimum number of matchings which decompose the edge set. Here we have a Peterson graph colored with four colors and each color class forms a matching. In 1972, Erdi, Faber, and Robas conjectured the following. Every n vertex linear hypergraph has chromatic index and most n. There are several examples of n vertex linear hypergraphs with chromatic index exactly n. And let me introduce three typical examples. The first example is a complete graph with n vertices where n is an odd integer. And the second example is an intersecting finite projective plane of order k, which is an intersecting linear hypergraph with n vertices and n edges, where each edge contains exactly k plus one vertices. And n satisfies this formula. Here we have a projective plane of order two or final plane, where each line represents each edge of this hypergraph. And there, there are seven vertices and seven lines corresponding to seven edges, respectively. The final example is degenerate plane or near pencil, which is an intersecting linear hypergraph with a minus, a, a minus one edges of size two and one single large edge of size n minus one. Because of vastly different structure of those extremal examples, it contributes to the difficulty of proving this conjecture. Because of long history of the conjecture, there are many previous results regarding the conjecture. And I will, I will mention some of them. First, we have a quite straightforward bound where the chromatic index is at most 2 and minus 3. 
to show this, first, we arrange the, arrange the edges in decreasing order so that we aim to color large, large size edges first. And one can see every edge of size k intersect at most two and minus four other edges of size at least k, which means by greedy coloring argument, we need two and minus four plus one colors to col color all the edges. And in 1989, Chang and Lawler was, were able to improve the straight four bound to 3n over 2. And because the chromatic index is the minimum number of the matchings to decompose the set of edges, if the conjecture is true, then by considering the largest size color class, there should be a matching of size, at least the number of edges divided by n. And in 1982, Seymour showed that that is actually true. In 1992, Kahn and Seymour proved a fractional version of EFL conjecture, which says that the fractional chromatic index of an n vertex linear hypergraph is at most n. One of the major work regarding hypergraph coloring is a result by Pipenger and Spencer in 1989, whose proof is based on Ruddle's semi random method. So the, their result says if H is a linear hypergraph such that every edge has size at most k, and if the max degree is much larger than k, then this chromatic index is asymptotically equal to the maximum degree. So if our hypergraph H is an n-vertex linear hypergraph, such that every edge has size at most a large constant, then its chromatic index is at most n plus literal n by Pipenger Spencer result. Moreover, if we exclude all the edges of size two, then the max degree is reduced to n over two, which implies that the chromatic index is roughly at most n over two by Pipenger and Spencer. And very recently, Faber and Harris were able to extend this visual to allow much larger edges of size, roughly order of square root of n. Finally, in 1992, Kahn was able to show that the Asymptotic version of EFL conjecture is true, such that every n vertex linear hypergraph has chromatic index and most n plus literal n. In fact, he improved this Pipenger Spencer result by allowing a small set of forbidden colors for each edge of bounded size to prove this result. So let me descri describe our recent result. So we were able to show that the EFL conjecture is true for all large linear hypergraphs, such that for, a, for every large integer n, every n vertex linear hypergraph has chromatic index and most n. Because our proof is constructive, it actually gives a polynomial time randomized algorithm to, to give a proper edge coloring with n colors for n vertex linear hypergraph with high probability. And we also prove a kind of stability result where if our n vertex hypergraph is far from being one of the three extremely examples I mentioned before, the chromatic index should be strictly less than n. And one of our recent result gave a characterization of an n vertex hyper linear hypergraph with chromatic index exactly n. So if so, our, hyper, our hypergraph is either isomorphic to a projective plane or should contain a vertex of degree very close to n. For the remaining of the time, I will briefly sketch the proof of our result. In the very beginning of our proof, 
we try to color all the edges of size at least some large constant R0 with n colors and let H large be the set of all such edges. To do so, we try to construct a certain ordering of the edges in H large so that the edges of H prime appear first in this ordering. And for all the other edges E outside of H prime, they have at most one minus rho n edges intersecting E, appearing before E. So if we can prove that the chromatic index of H prime is at most n, then by greedy coloring, sweep, sweeping from the left from left to right in this ordering, we can show that all the edges can be colored with n colors properly. And in fact, we can we analyze the structure of H prime so that either the line graph of H prime is local has a locally sparse structure, or H prime is close to a projective plane, so that H prime can be colored with n colors. In the second step, we extend the coloring in the previous step by coloring small edges using Rodel's label method, which is a semi-random method, and a technique called absorption with some set of visual Boyer edges. And because of the nature of the semi-random method, we can deduce that the set of leftover uncolored edges forms a nicely structured graph so that we can finish our coloring. So in summary, we reduce our EFL problem to graph coloring problems for each step. So let me demonstrate the proof of step two. And we assume that all edges of H have size either two or three. Even for these specific cases, cases, it already captures the core idea of the proof of step two. So in our proof, we try to find k many edge disjoint matchings m on to mk, where k is roughly n half, satisfying the union of the edges should contain all the edges of size three and the leftover graph after deleting the union of the matching should have max degree at most n minus k. So if we have, if we can find such such a set of matchings, then we can color i's matching with color i. And if the max degree of the leftover graph is at most n minus k, then by breathing theorem, we can color the leftover graph with n minus k plus one colors. So that if we combine both coloring, we deduce that our hypergraph has chromatic index at most n plus one. And in fact, we can analyze the structure of the leftover graph when the max degree is exactly equal to n minus k so that we can reduce the chromatic index from n plus one to n at the end. To be more precise, we first, we define a the set U of high, high degree vertices in H whose degree is close to N. And we consider the graph of edges of size two in H. And because of the definition of this set, all the vertices in U should have degree very close to N in G as well. And as I mentioned before, we consider a, a reserve Boyer set of edges in, G, edges in G by choosing each edge in G with probability one half and by chain of bound with high probability for every vertex W, its degree in R, the regional border set, should be close to a half of the degree in G. And by this relation, we have the following, following inequality that after deleting the edges in R, the resulting hypergraph should have max degree at most roughly n over two. So because a, h minus r has max degree roughly n over two, we can color 
this resulting sub-hypergraph with k colors through k is roughly n over 2 in a way that each color class is, mi is pseudorandom, where I will briefly explain what pseudorandom matchings are. And because R only contains the edges of size two, all the edges of size three is already colored by those color classes. And for every non-new varices, by the definition and the construction of R, their degree in R should be strictly less than n minus k. And because our each of the color class is pseudorandom, and because we constructed R in a random-like way, we can extend this color each of the color classes by adding a few R edges so that every U vertex lies in most of the matchings, most of the color classes, so that at least k minus of them should contain every U vertex. So because of this fact, we deduce that the max degree of the leftover graph should have max degree at most n minus k. So let me briefly explain what pseudorandom matchings are. So the study of pseudorandom matchings was initiated by Alun and Neuster. And very recently, Ehard, Golok, and Juice were able to strengthen the result by Alon and Euster in a quantitative way. So suppose we have a uniform large linear hypergraph such that every vertex has degree very close to D, where D is sufficiently large enough. And suppose we have a collection of prescribed subset of vertices S, where each of the prescribed subset has large size. And suppose we don't have a lot of prescribed subset of vertices, then the result gives a polynomial time algorithm, polynomial time randomized algorithm, which finds a matching such that every for every prescribed subset of vertices, the number of vertices in S not covered by the matching should be roughly gamma times the size of S, which means roughly gamma proportion of the vertices in S are not covered by the matching. So in order to show this, they use the hypergraph coloring result by Molloy and Reed. And the proof of Molloy and Reed, they, they use a semi-random method based on the robust local lemma. And because we have an uh, algorithm in robust local lemma by Mozart and Tardosh, we can transform their proof into an algorithmic proof. So as, a, as summary, we have a randomized algorithm, polynomial time algorithm, which find k edge disjoint matchings m on 10 k such that the union of the matchings should cover all the edges in h minus r. And because r only contains the edges of size two, those unions should contain all edges of size three. And if we consider the leftover graph, the leftover graph should have max degree m, m most n minus k. And if the max degree is equal to n minus k, then we have some additional structure properties. So in particular, if the max degree is strictly less than n minus k, then we can use Bidding theorem to color the leftover graph with n most n minus k colors. So by combining the coloring from the color classes, we, we deduce that the chromatic number of chromatic index of H should be at most n for this case. On the other hand, if we have, if the leftover graph has chromatic has maximum degree exactly at minus k, then using the structure information we obtained so far, we can use the following result by Glock, Kuhn, and Ostus regarding coloring pseudorandom large graph. So if the large graph, which is pseudorandom, 
and having only a few vertices of degree equal to max degree, then the resulting graph can be edge colored with delta G colors in polynomial time. So using this result, instead of applying Bithing theorem and using the K color classes, we, we deduce that our hypergraph can be colored with N colors. So this is a demonstration of the proof in step two. And this is the end of the talk. Thanks for listening.